With the release of Natlan, we are getting two brand new artifact sets, Obsidian Codex and Scroll of the Hero of Cinder City. In this video, I will go over these two sets, explain what they do, and which characters can use them. Both sets were officially revealed in the 5.0 livestream, but keep in mind that information regarding the Natlan characters is still subject to change. Before going over these sets, I first want to explain the upcoming gameplay mechanic of Natlan called Night Soul, as both artifact sets are related to it. We start with what is called a Night Soul's Blessing, which, simply put, is a special state Natlan characters can enter, boosting their combat and movement abilities. Currently, Kachina, Mulani, and Kinich can all enter this state by using their elemental skill. Taking Kachina as an example, using her skill, she will enter the Night Soul's Blessing and gain 60 Night Soul points, which can be tracked through this bar. While the Night Soul's Blessing is active, Kachina can ride her Turbo Twirly, allowing her to traverse terrain faster and deal Night Soul damage. Night Soul is a damage type exclusive to Natlan characters similar to Archie-aligned damage in Fontaine. Going back to Kachina, while she's in the Night Soul's Blessing and riding her Turbo Twirly, you can use her normal attacks to slam into the ground and deal Night Soul-aligned Geo damage. The Night Soul's Blessing will last until you run out of Night Soul points. Different actions will consume different amounts of points. For Kachina, just moving around in her Turbo Twirly, will consume around 1 Night Soul point per second, while dealing damage will consume 10 points. This of course depends on each character. The way Night Soul points are granted can also be different between each character. With Kinnich, using his skill will allow him to enter the Night Soul's Blessing for 10 seconds, and he generates 2 Night Soul points each second. There's also another mechanic called a Night Soul Burst. To trigger this, your party must contain a character from Natlan. When any party member, regardless of their element or region, deals elemental damage to an opponent, a Night Soul Burst will be triggered. A Night Soul Burst can only be triggered once every 18 seconds if you only have one Natlan character in your party. The more characters you have, the lower the cooldown of a Night Soul Burst. When there are three characters from Natlan, you can trigger a Night Soul Burst once every 9 seconds. A Night Soul Burst can activate parts of a character's kit. For example, with Milani, her second passive will grant her one stack of Wave Chaser's exploits when a Night Soul Burst is triggered. Using Milani's Burst will consume all stacks and deal extra damage based on the number of stacks consumed. But with that out of the way, let's go over these two new sets, starting with the Obsidian Codex. For this set's two-piece effect, while the wielding character is in the Night Soul's Blessing state, all damage dealt will be increased by 15%. As for the four-piece bonus, after the wielding character consumes one Night Soul point, crit rate will be increased by 40% for 6 seconds. This effect can only trigger while the character is on field and only once every second. Simply put, the Obsidian Codex artifact set is pretty much a free 40% crit rate for characters that can enter the Night Soul's Blessing State, making it a better set than Marishasi Hunter's 36% crit rate for characters that can use it. The 15% damage bonus is also a universal buff and not tied to certain types of attacks or elements. You only need to be in the Night Soul's Blessing to activate it. While this set looks to be amazing, I do want to note that it is not always an instant 40% crit rate. The character wielding this set would need to be in the Night Soul's Blessing and consume one Night Soul point to gain the 40% crit rate bonus. For someone like Milani, this is not a huge issue, since she would already start consuming Night Soul points before dealing the majority of her damage. However, for Kinnich, when he enters the Night Soul's Blessing, he starts with zero points and gains points instead of consuming them. Only after firing off a certain attack would he consume Night Soul points and activate the crit rate buff. If you start your rotation with your burst, 
you would also lose out on the crit rate buff. For Kinnich, even with the drawback of missing a bit of uptime on the crit rate buff, this would still be his best in slot set, around 2% better than the next best option, Unfinished Reverie in a burning team. For other Natlan damage dealers like Milani, this is also her best in slot, around 4% better than Marachaussee Hunter if you're running Farina in your team. And practically, for anyone who can enter the Night Soul's Blessing, this will probably be the best option for damage. Even Kachina can use this if you want her to deal the most damage. However, she serves more of a sub DPS role and there is another set that will be better for her. And aside from the upcoming Natlan cast, who else can use this? Well, currently no one else. Unless we get another Marachose Hunter situation, where at launch only a few characters could use this set until we got Farina, who enabled this set on pretty much all characters that could receive healing during their rotation. And by no means am I the first person to suggest such a thing, and this is also just speculation, but we might get a character that does enable other party members to enter the Night Soul's Blessing. It might even be the Pyro Archon who enables such a mechanism. But again, this is just speculation, and I wouldn't farm this set solely for the chance that a future character might enable this set to be used on other characters. However, for the current Natlan damage dealers, this is a very strong set. Moving on to the second set, Scroll of the Hero of Cinder City, this set's two-piece bonus will regenerate six energy for the wielding character if any party member triggers a Night Soul Burst. As a reminder, a Night Soul Burst can be triggered once every 18 seconds if your party contains a character from Natlan just by dealing elemental damage. The more characters from Natlan, the lower the cooldown of a Night Soul Burst becomes. As for the four-piece bonus, we're met with a huge wall of text, and to put it simply, after the wielding character triggers an elemental reaction, all party members will gain a 12% damage bonus for all the elements involved in the reaction for 15 seconds, presumably the wielding character's element and the second element involved in the reaction. If the wielding character is in their Night Soul's Blessing, all party members will gain a further 28% bonus elemental damage for the aforementioned elements for 20 seconds, which brings the total to a 40% damage bonus. This effect can be triggered off-field. Two characters equipping this set cannot stack the damage bonus. To trigger the damage bonus from this set's effect, the wielding character would need to trigger an elemental reaction, and they can even be off-field to do so. For example, if you have Kachina wielding this set, and she triggers Crystallize with Hydro. All party members will gain both Geo and Hydro damage bonuses. So, in the worst case scenario, this is just a 12% damage bonus for most teams without a character from Natlan. And in the best case scenario, this set gives bonus energy and a 40% damage bonus if the character wielding this set is from Natlan. The bonus energy should still be achievable if you have any party member from Natlan, even if the wielding character isn't. While 12% may seem a bit low, for characters who often use sets like Tenacity of the Millilith or Noblesse, this is a decent option even without any party members from Natlan. For example, this set on Bennett should give your team a bit more damage than Noblesse. This is especially true if you already have a lot of attack buffs. This set even allows you to run Noblesse on your other party members and gain both bonus attack and damage bonus. For example, in an overload team with both Chevreuse and Bennett, you could run Noblesse on one character since the attack buff does not stack. But with Scroll of the Hero of Cinder City set, you could run the second character on Noblesse without losing any damage. So for practically any character whose purpose is to buff your damage, like Bennett, or is usually used with a team buffing set like Kokomi, or sometimes even Dea, you can use Scroll of the Hero of Cinder City on them. And compared to Tenacity of the Millilith and Noblesse's attack buff, the 12% damage bonus you get is more universal and can be used with HP or defense scaling characters. 
With a healer like Chevreuse, who can use ocean-hued clam or songs of days past, Scroll of the Hero of Cinder City is a slightly better option. In Chevreuse's case, she can deal decent damage, and the 20% burst damage bonus Noblesse gives can make it just marginally better than Scroll of the Hero of Cinder City. The same also applies to characters that usually run a team buffing set, but also deal decent damage. Like Singsho, for example, running Noblesse for his personal damage will be better. Enemo characters would still prefer running Viridescent Venerer, as the 40% resistance reduction is still significant, unless you're running them to buff another Enemo unit, where running Scroll of the Hero of Cinder City, or an attack buffing set, can be better. As for support Geo characters like Zhongli, Archaic Petra's 35% damage bonus is still greater in teams where you can make use of it, compared to the 12% damage bonus from Scroll of the Hero of Cinder City. However, if you are playing Zhongli with another Geo damage dealer, Scroll of the Hero of Cinder City or an attack buffing set will be better. There is also another case where you don't want this set. If you're playing a reaction-based team where elemental mastery matters, running the instructor's set is a better option on your supports. Since the bonus 120 elemental mastery can be much more valuable. And lastly, for characters from Natlan, this will be a great option for supports or sub-DPS units. Kachina, who can serve as a sub-DPS in your party, can use this set, and this will be the best option for overall team damage. Running this set on Kachina also allows her to be a very strong Geo sub-DPS in many teams, for example, in a Navia team where you usually run a second Geo unit. Kachina on this set can potentially be one of the best options for your team. Overall, this is a very strong set and one that can be run on a lot of characters. And as with most sets released with the introduction of a new region, these two new sets, Obsidian Codex and Scroll of the Hero of Cinder City, both look to be very strong sets and ones that will potentially be usable on more upcoming Natlan characters. And that's all for this video. I'm extremely hyped for Natlan's release, and I hope this video cleared up any questions regarding these new sets. Thank you for making it till the end, and thank you for watching.